A very important tournament has begun on the 5th of April 2022 in Pune. It's the national championship of the visually impaired uh, and it is one of the most important events for the blind chess players of India. All the top players of India who are visually impaired have gathered in the PYC Gymkhana in Pune and it's going to be a very very exciting tournament. Just to show you what the standings are after round 3. There were two rounds played yesterday and one today in the morning. These are the standings. We have Milin Samant on the top with three points out of three. Subendru Kumar Patra is also on three. Saundarya Kumar Pradhan is on three. Ashwin Makwana is on three and Kishan Ganguly. All these players are leading with three out of three. We had the top seed um, Darpan Inani who actually lost his second round game and then drew his third round. So he's right now on one and a half points. Aryan Joshi, Mari Muttu, Swapnil Shah are on two and a half. So it's a very strong event and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. It's uh, an event of nine rounds that will happen over some games. Here are some pictures for you to see. This is the game that we are going to see today. I think it was the game, very nice game of day one between Aryan Joshi and Shiddad. Uh, but some more pictures. This is the playing hall of the tournament. Very nicely arranged. Uh, bright and airy. This is the tournament trophies. You also have the sponsors for this tournament which is Sawa Herbals who have sponsored this event. Great job by them. Uh, in the opening ceremony, we had guests who opened the game between Darpan on the left and Vaishali Salaukar. Uh, this is Kishan Gangoli on the left. He is six-time national champion. In fact, he's the defending champion here. He will be looking to make it seven this time. Then we have uh, Ashwin Makwana in this picture. Also a very well-known player. We have Sandarya Kumar Pradhan on the left and here you can see the player writing in braille the score sheet on the right. We then have Subendu Kumar Patra on the right, uh, a strong player and all these pictures have been sent to us by Murti Manjunath who is the arbiter, chief arbiter of the tournament. So big thank you to him. Let's go to the game that we want to see between Aryan Joshi and Shiddat. A lot to learn from this game uh, and uh, let's dive right into it. Aryan opens the game with e4. Shiddat goes for the Scandinavian. Ed, queen d5, knight to c3, queen a5 and now knight f3 was played when black went for bishop to g4. This, is, this move can be taken advantage of. Aryan played bishop c4 but here's a nice idea for you to remember. You can go h3, bishop h5 and now a slightly unusual move, but one that should be part of your repertoire if you are playing against the Scandinavian is b4. Now, what is this move? What if black just takes the pawn? Well, if black takes the pawn, you go rook b1, attack the queen, activate the rook and pick up the pawn on b7. So that does not work. Also, in fact, this b4 move is not very uncommon. After the third move, queen a5, you can instantly go b4, queen takes b4, rook b1 and in this case you don't even win the pawn on b7 after queen f5 but it's a legitimate uh, pawn sacrifice. In fact, you go rook b5, attack the queen and you play it that way. And maybe queen a5 is not the best move, queen d6 should be played but it's a well-known pawn sacrifice. Okay, going back to the game, after bishop g4, Aryan played bishop c4. Knight to f6, d4, c6, castles, e6, rook e1, bishop e7, bishop d2, trying to set up some kind of a discovered attack with bishop to uh, bishop on a5, like bishop d2 uh, attacking the queen on a5, queen c7, h3, bishop h5. And now queen to e2 was played. Uh, castles g4. Aryan goes for it after bishop g6. 
now the knight comes to the e5 square here it was important for black to continue with knight bd7 but instead black played bishop d6 and here's your question what should white play in this position that gives him not just a small edge but in fact close to winning advantage here it's a very tactical position and something which is not so easy to calculate but we'll, if you can find it, will help you. Okay, the move here is h4. What a move. My point is I want to trap your bishop with h5. Well, if you take bishop takes c2 now, then the easiest way to win here is rook c1, attacking your bishop. If you move back to g6, I go h5 and I trap your bishop. Uh, if instead you take bishop e5, I play de knight d7 h5 here's the interesting line bishop c2 rook c1 and now black seems to have in a losing position is in a losing position but b5 is still possible to fight on but after bishop e6 fe6 and rook c2 white has a close to decisive advantage in this position mainly because the black pieces are very very in uh, inactive and still inside their camp this brings us to the position after 13th move 95 and uh, you start to wonder if knight bd7 h4 what is the problem here well the problem is that after 95 de5 knight d7 h5 bishop c2 now if rook c1 then comes the move b5 and after bishop e6 fe6 rook c2 you will notice the difference is that instead of in the last variation there was a knight on b8 instead of bishop on e7 and this changes the evaluation completely here after a move like bishop c5 it's black who is better slightly instead of white winning the game so that's the huge difference that a small move can create okay Never mind, after bishop d6, Aryan did not go for h4 in the game. He played the safe move, knight takes g6. But after h g6, black has no issues. Knight e4, uh, bishop h2 check, king g2, knight went to d7, rook came to h1, black played his bishop to f4. Black is having a great position here, knight f6, knight f6, rook e1. Well, here, uh, I think if black had gone, bishop takes d2. Queen d2 and then c5, black would have a very, very good position. I mean, close to uh, a very sizable edge because white king is slightly exposed. Black is very powerful. But instead, Shiddat played knight d5. And now Aryan once again went for h4. Uh, maybe Aryan should have taken on d5, cd5, bishop f4, Queen f4 and maybe c3 and the position is round about equal. But when he played h4, once again the idea of bishop d2, queen d2 and rook a d8 with c5 in the air would have been the best to play. But after h4, bishop d2, queen d2, black made a small inaccuracy. He played queen to f4. Now this allowed the exchange of the queens. Queen takes f4, knight takes f4, king g3. And now you can see that the king, instead of being weak, is active. Black has a very nice position. Uh, white has a very nice position now. Knight d5, rook h2 was played, rook d8, c3, knight f6, f4, gaining space, rook d6. And now the next move is very cool. h5. g takes h5 and g5. Not spoiling the structure, but actually going g5. The knight d5, I take on h5, g6, rook to h6, king g7, rook h1. And now a nice defensive move by Shiddad, rook g8, after check, king f8. Here, Aryan might have thought for a while and, uh, you know, he should have kept his bishop on the board. But I can understand his decision of taking on d5. He wanted to clarify the position, cd5. But after king f3, black is equal, you know, he doesn't seem to have any real difficulties. In fact, 
even a move like rook g7 should be playable here trying to exchange one pair of rooks but he went b5 and now Aryan brought his king in king e3 king e7 king d3 rook d7 a4 was played this was a cool move but uh, black now played a6 and I think a better idea would have been to be active it's one of the most important rules in end games that try to be active and if he had taken b takes a4 rook a1 rook b8 attacking b2 let's say you go uh, if you go king c2 i go rook d b7 already attacking b2 again and instead of king c2 if you go rook h2 i'll again go rook d b7 rook takes a4 rook takes b2 rook takes b2 rook takes b2 rook a7 king f8 and the position is equal so a4 b takes a4 was a better move but he went a6 in the position and after a b a b rook a1 rook c7 rook a5 rook b7 rook h1 rook b8 rook a1 and now king d7 rook a7 king c7 everything looks pretty okay here but now Aryan comes up with another very powerful plan and he plays his king to c2. His idea is to play king to b3 then to b4 and attack the b5 weakness. Shiddat had to be very careful here and it's in this position he should have gone for active play. What should black play here? Well, if you came up with the move b4, excellent job. That's a good move. Or if you came up with the move rook h8, also good job because after king b3, you can put your rook on h2 or h4 attacking those pawns and black is doing completely fine. But king c8 was not a good idea and after king b3, king c7, king b4, you can already see that white is close to winning. King c6, he gave a check. King d7, he took the rook. King c5, so after rook b7, rook b7, king c5, rook c7 check, king takes b5, rook b7, rook b6, rook a7, king c5, rook a1, rook b7, king e8, king d6, threatening rook b8 mate, king f8, b4, rook, king, uh, rook f1, king e5, and rook e1, king f6. Black resigned here and Aryan Joshi had won this endgame. Very instructive game with some very nice elements there. I hope you liked it and I hope that you will follow this tournament, the National Visually Impaired uh, Championship 2022. I'll be trying to bring you videos from there. We also have reports on Chess Base India. I will link that in the description. Please do follow the event and I wish all the players very good luck. This is Sagasha signing off. Bye-bye.